Joining us now is Terry Austin, a New York attorney and legal analyst. Terry, when we look at what's going on in Seattle right now, I mean, this calls amid calls for police reforms, and that is something that a lot of people, even in Seattle, say they will get to. But for the time being, the situation is revolving around this area known as CHOP. What, could, what can and should, I should say, the Seattle mayor do to respond to this situation? Well, I think we need to see police reform all across the country, not just in Seattle, Washington. And I think we are seeing that here in New York, for instance, there is now a ban on chokeholds. And even on the federal level, Alex, we are seeing that both the Senate and the House are proposing a bill to have police reform at all levels, frankly, so that there's no chokeholds, so we have a ban on no-knock warrants, and that deadly force is not used when it's not needed. And those are all things, too, that it seems like there's some bipartisan consensus from the two sides when it comes to the ban on chokeholds, no-knock warrants. We saw the president sign an executive order last week on the, those very topics. We see that Republicans and Democrats in Congress are actually coming together on some of those topics. There are some discrepancies, but largely this is something that we do see that there might be some progress on the horizon. So when we talk about police reforms, what is something that is very plausible that you think could make the biggest difference? Well, I think we do have a consensus, Alex, on making sure that we have more transparency, making sure that we have more training. But I do think there are still differences between the House and the Senate. And basically, those differences are, for the chokehold, I think Democrats primarily want to see a ban, a complete ban on a chokehold, whereas we see the Republicans and, generally speaking, the Senate they want to have it restricted. As far as no-knock warrants are concerned, again, the difference is the Democrats basically want to see a ban on that where we see on the other side they want it to be reported. So while there are some similarities and we have some compromises, we still do have some differences. And one of the main differences also is the qualified immunity, where police officers, if they are acting in good faith, they would be immune from a civil lawsuit. And there's a difference there on the two sides, where the Democrats want there to be some liability as far as that's concerned. And Republicans are saying, no, we need this qualified immunity. And when it comes to the first thing regarding chokeholds, too, it does bring up a bigger idea of when police can use the use of force. I should phrase it that way. Uh, we've seen several different circumstances where it does become a little bit more of a hotly contested debate. When we look at George Floyd, it's very obvious that that was uh, not an improper use of force. I mean, there, there was no threat to the police officers at that time. But then we look at something, for example, the Rayshard Brooks case in Atlanta. And that's when it is a little bit more disputed. Some people are saying he was running away. He shouldn't have even been engaged by the police. And then some people say, saying that he did turn around and he did fire off the taser at police officers. And to some degree, that could be considered the use of a deadly weapon against an officer. So how do we really kind of split the difference when we're talking about use of force and really applying a standard that can be applied to all police across the country? Well, here's the standard. Don't use deadly force unless you are protecting yourself or the public from the use of deadly force. Each case has to be reviewed separately, and you're absolutely right. George Floyd is very different from a Rayshard Brooks. But even in that case, he's running away. And yes, he is shooting a weapon at the police officer, but it's a taser and technically it's not deadly force. And the police really had other options. They could have done a perimeter of the area. They had his car, they had his address. And the question is, was there a need to shoot him twice in the back? And frankly, there were others in the area. We know for a fact that one of those bullets went into another car, so others could have been shot as well. And the question is, was that reasonable under the circumstances? And there is a debate to be had about the pursuit of that individual. I mean, they did have his car. They would be able to identify him at a later date. But then on the other side of that argument, I mean, the district attorney uh, in that same area just two weeks prior said that a taser was a deadly weapon when it was be being used against police officers. So I think that does kind of speak to a testimony a little bit about the idea that there is no standard that's really in place right now and that maybe there does need to be a more defined one. But before I let you go too, when we're talking about the idea of police reforms. I mean, we talked about the legislation. We talked about what uh, the president did. We talked about this overall movement that's taking place in the country right now. Does this look like a thing that you believe we will get a consensus on and that people, once there is action taken, will be happy with the outcome? 
I do think we are at a tipping point at this point in time with the death of, you know, George Floyd. I do think that people and protesters are saying we need changes. And frankly, we are seeing changes, but I think we have to change the behavior. I think we have to change the culture. So I'm happy to see that there are these policy changes and that it's happening across the country. But I think we have to amend the relationship between police and people, particularly people of color. No, I think you're right. And I think the American people, too, are generally on board. It's when all of a sudden you hear about abolishing police, where you see the support go down in the polls. But when it comes to actual reforms, I mean, even we can look back all the way to George Floyd when that was first taking place. Polls showed that the American people were very largely on board for reform. So it'll be interesting to see if politicians respond to that demand. Terry Austin, I appreciate you coming on tonight. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Alex.